Hey everybody, it's Zach from My Shire Farm, and today we're going to talk about goals. Uh, 2022 is right around the corner, and uh, I just finished up our goal setting for My Shire Farm for 2022, and uh, I've got six rules that I live by as far as my goal setting goes, and I wanted to share those with you because I know a lot of you have reached out and said that you're starting a homestead or you're still new to the homestead or starting a business or whatever the case may be, just life in general, and it's really hard for you to know even where to start setting goals. Um, and I'm a big believer that you don't accomplish anything unless you've got a vision for it. Uh, the Bible says, write the vision and make it plain. Those are the goals, and hopefully these six rules you can apply, and uh, it'll help you on your journey with whatever your goals are. At the end of this video, we're going to share with you what our homestead goals are for the year, and uh, hopefully you can track us and follow us along and watch us as we accomplish our goals for the year. Um, so number one, write it down on paper on purpose. That is right. If you know anything about me, you know that I love notebooks. Uh, so I'm a big, big, big believer that it has to be written down, not typed out on your phone, not typed out on a computer or an iPad. It can't be in your head. You can't just tell somebody out loud once and that's your goal. No, these have to be on paper, on purpose. Um, you know I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of notepads and notebooks all over the place in the barn uh, because that's... That's how I remember everything. Uh, so on paper, on purpose, I'm telling you, it makes a difference. Just try it. It makes a difference. Uh, number two, three to five goals each in each category of life. What I mean by that is we have three to five goals for the MyShire Farm business. We have three to five goals with, for the MyShire Farm homestead to be more self-sufficient. And we have three to five goals in our personal lives. Now, we have separated those um, so that we can give 110% to each goal and to each category of our lives. So I'm going to tell you a story that I heard a long time ago, and this has always stuck with me. This probably happened, I don't even know, 14, 15 years ago, and this story has always stuck with me. Uh, so hopefully this will help you as well. But... A long time ago, many moons ago, um, I worked for a company and they would take their top, I think it was 150 employees every year, and they would take them to Cancun for a retreat and uh, you would do, you know, uh, classes during the day and seminars and then a couple of speakers and then at night you all would hang out, things like that. At the end of that, I think it was five days, at the end of the fifth day, uh, the vice president got up and did a, a talk. And he said something that has always stuck with me, and this actually started me on my journey uh, to become more self-sufficient. And what that was, was he said, you know, hey everybody, I want to ask you a question before we begin. And he said, if you had to rate yourself from a 1 to a 10 at work, what would you rate yourself? And of course, everybody said, you know, yelled out, nine, ten, eight. Someone said four. And, uh, and he goes, okay, okay, okay. Well, you're all here. And out of thousands and thousands of, of employees that we have, you are the top 1%. So I would say you're all tens. That's great. Congratulations. Give yourself a round of applause. And then we would all go crazy. And it was great. Um, he said, now here's my second question. It's a two parter. I forgot to tell you. And then we all got a little scared and he said, what would you rate yourself at home? How happy are you? How happy is your family? How would you rate yourself as a father or a mother or a husband or a wife or a child or a friend? How would you rate yourself from a one to 10? Honestly, no one, no one said anything. It just wasn't our focus. Our focus was Career, 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 right? I mean, that's the type of people that were there. We gave up so much so that we could be the best at what we do. And he said, you're not doing it right and you're failing. And that's unacceptable. And I don't want you to work here anymore. Uh, and he got our attention like that. And his point was, is if you're not a 10 at home and a 10 at work, then you're failing both. 
you have to give it 110%. And it's so hard for so many of us, including myself, to not step off the gas on one so that I can go harder on another. It has to be a balance. Um, and so that's what I mean by three to five goals in each category of life, because we can separate My Shire Farm business to My Shire Farm homestead to My Shire Farm personal to me, not My Shire. Um, and, uh, and I really do, I really do think that, that helps. Uh, so hopefully that story, uh, will help motivate you and, and help you think about how better you can be in a 10 position in every category of your life. Number three, specific and measurable. Any uh, speech you hear or any YouTube video you watch or any book you read is always going to say specific and measurable, but that is because it is tried and true, and I believe it 100%. So just an example, you tell me your goal is to save money for 2022. Not gonna happen, I don't believe you. And then you go, oh, oh okay, I, I got my notebook and I wrote it down. Goal for 2022, save money. Not gonna, not gonna happen, I, I don't believe you. This is how it should happen. You write it down on paper, on purpose, right? And you say, all right, I want to save, we're going to use the example, I want to save $6,000 this year. I'm going to open up a savings account. I'm going to save $6,000. Okay, break that down. I'm telling you this helps us so much. So we're going to break it down real quick as an example. You want to save $6,000 in a year in one full year from January 1st to December 31st of 2022. So that $6,000, you break it down. That means you need to save $500 a month. Well, you get paid every two weeks. So you need to save $250 a paycheck. All right, well, that sounds pretty good. That's a lot better than I gotta come up with six grand this year, right? You break it down. Now, let's say you have to buy some equipment or you have to buy new clothes for work, or you have to fix your car, or whatever the case may be. Well, that $250 is gonna go real fast because life happens, right? So break it down more. All right, well, 250 every two weeks means it's 125 a week, but break it down more. Well, that means it's $18 a day, somewhere around there, somewhere. Uh, so $18 a day, so you don't have to take $250 out of every paycheck, you can cut something out. And then that changes the whole equation. So you gotta be open-minded. I'm gonna get to more of this in just a second. I'm gonna give you a really, really good answer uh, or a really good idea that we use here. That's probably the best one and it's rule number six, but it's probably the best one that we do. Uh, and we'll talk about that more in just a few minutes. But the purpose of this one is to be specific and measurable and break it down because you can see, okay, I saved my 125 for the week or I saved my 250 for the, the every two weeks or I saved my 500 for the month or whatever the case may be, that's measurable. But if you don't do that and you say, by the end of the year, I'm gonna have $6,000 and then December 1st, you go, I have $12 in my savings account. Well, it's because you weren't, you weren't measuring it throughout the year. So you gotta be consistent with that. Um, number four. Why do you want to? What is the purpose? Um, and what is the benefit? I am a very, very big believer that it is mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. I really do believe that um, we have the ability, we have the power to will things to happen in some instances. And so I really do believe that you have to be behind this. So for example, my wife cannot give me my goals. We have to do this together um, because I'm just not going to be as motivated or as excited or as, as you know, um, I'm just, I'm not going to feel it. But if we come up with it together, then I'm full force, you know? Uh, so you have to get something that you're really, really interested in. Um, cause if you already start off the year saying, I'm going to lose 70 pounds this year, it sounds awful. Most likely it's not going to happen. Cause really you don't want to do it. You want the benefits of it, but you don't want to do it. But if you get really excited about it and I'm going to share something that we do here. Um, I'm a big believer of visual effects. 
So for example, one of our goals for our homestead this year is getting bees. So January 1st, guess what's going on my screen at, at, on my phone? A beehive. So that every time I look at my phone, it's a, yep, I gotta stay focused. Yep, I gotta get that. Or uh, for example, if you want to start raising meat rabbits this year, well, get a calendar with a bunch of rabbits on it and use that calendar every day. And then every time you look at it, you go, yep, that's my goal. I got to keep at it. I got to keep at it. I'm really, really big on visuals. Um, for example, uh, if you want to lose weight, well, then get a, buy, go buy a really nice pair of pants of what size you want to fit into and then put them right on your wall in your living room. And every day you walk in, you go, okay. That's what I got to do. I'm telling you, it really, really does help. You've got to stay excited. I'm a big, big believer uh, that that helps a lot. And I hope that these are helping. If they are, hit the like button, support the channel. We're trying to give you information that has brought us success that you can as well. Number five, make it a celebration. Uh, so break down the goals like we talked about before, uh, you know, make them measurable. And then when you hit the little goals, you have to celebrate and it can be big. It can be little. It doesn't matter, but you have to celebrate because if you don't allow yourself to celebrate, you will lose steam throughout the year. And by the end of the year, you're not doing it. You don't want to do it. You're resentful because you did do it or you just gave up completely, whatever the case may be. So you need the little wins. We're a big believer on that here. You need the little wins. Uh, so for example, we just hit 20,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel just last week. That was a big goal for me. That was my goal for 2021 is I wanted to hit 20,000 subscribers and we were two weeks early. Thank you very much. Uh, and I put a lot of work and effort into it. Now, what did we do to celebrate? Well, we actually hit it on a Friday night and it was right before our date night, me and my wife's date night. So we didn't do anything different. Sat home, watched a movie, ate some food, went to bed. Not a big deal. That's just normally what we do. But that was our celebration. Our celebration was, hey, congratulations. Or every time, time we take a bite, be like, oh, it tastes so much better with victory in my mouth or whatever the case may be. Like we just had fun with it. Uh, it can be just coming into a room. I've done this before. Come into a room, write, read the goals that I set for myself and then just sit back for five minutes of alone time and just think, Yep, this is what I really, really wanted, and I'm doing it. And you have to congratulate yourself, because guess what? These are your goals. So at the end of the day, no one else cares, right? They're yours. So you have to congratulate yourself. I can be excited for you. A bunch of other people can say congratulations, but at the end of the day, if you aren't happy about it, and if you aren't allowing yourself to pat yourself on the back, I'm telling you, you lose steam real quick. Uh, so that was just something that we've learned along the way. And number six, if I have to say so myself, is probably my absolute favorite. And that is you have to have a roadmap to your destination. It's as simple as that. So for example, our goal is, well, our rule is every goal that we have, we have to mark down 20 ways on how we're going to get there. And they can be big, they can be little, they can be simple, they can be things that you think aren't even realistic. Uh, but, so for example, I will share with you one of our goals. Uh, so one of our MyShire Farm goals this year is to hit 35,000 subscribers for 2022. So that's a 15,000 subscriber increase. We're only at 20,000 subscribers. So that's pretty it's pretty bold. That's pretty big. Minimum of 20 different how-to ways to get there. So I'm just going to share a few and I'm going to share some really big ones that are very detailed. And then I'm going to share some things that are just so simple that you go, why is that even on the list? It, it has to be. You need 20, right? So for example, uh, I'm going to post on a schedule starting in January. So you'll know when we're posting. I think that will help with subscribers. Uh, we're going to do two lives and one video a week. And we might have a bonus during that week, but the minimum is three videos a week. Um, 
we are going to do more homesteading videos. We're going to share with you our bee situation. We're going to share with you our meat rabbits. We're going to share about our emus and, and our pigs and all the babies that are here born on the farm. We haven't done that before. So we're going to give you a lot more homesteading videos. I think that will help. Um, we are going to set up, set up a studio for us so that I'm just not all over the place. I've got one place that I can go and do my videos at. I think that will help a lot. Um, and then um, a simple one. We're going to do the... I've got a playlist called All About the Colors, uh, and it breaks down every color that we have. We're going to put the link of each one of those on our website. So if you're looking at the fab fee hatching eggs in the description it'll be a link so that it breaks down all the information in like a five minute video and you'll know whether it works best for you or not uh so that should help uh i'm gonna i'm going to read five different books on how youtube works on um how to do better videos lighting sound i'm going to consume myself with at least five books to help me do better for you uh, and those are just some of the examples. Again, we've got 20 of them right here. Um, but that's just one example. But you've got to do 20. For example, our main goal for our MyShire Farm business, you know, and that is sales and customer volume and egg production and live quail sales and all that stuff. That is my big one. Um, you know, that, that takes quite a bit of time. We've got, so far, we've got 31 uh, things that we have to do. And... Again, I look at these every week, every week, every Monday, I sit down and I go, I'm not doing well at that. I really need to focus on that. Or, hey, I got that one down pat. That's great. Good job. Or this one, oh God, I haven't even started. Like, I don't even know what, I, and I just look at them every week. Sometimes it's very frustrating. Sometimes it's very stressful. And sometimes I go, you know, I'm doing pretty good this week. And you've got to tell yourself that. Because uh, we're very easily, we very easily tell each other or tell ourselves how bad we're doing or how better we should be doing. Uh, very rarely do we pick ourselves back up. And so we've got to do both, right? So that are, that is our six rules for goal setting. I hope that that helps. And our goals for My Shire Farm uh, homesteading this year, again, three to five, uh, we've got uh, bees. We want to start the bees. We kind of already talked about that. I'm very, very excited about getting my own bees. Uh, number two is we're going to fix the aviary, make it predator proof. And uh, we are actually going to be putting a bunch of rabbits in there uh, for meat. And uh, we think that they're going to absolutely love that huge aviary. Uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be really cool to see a bunch of rabbits in there. And uh, so that's going to be a big project, but we're going to do meat rabbits. Um, we're going to at the front of our uh, driveway, or at the end of our driveway, um, right before we get to the houses or the barn, is a little uh, fenced-in pasture. And our goats are up there right now. What we're going to do is redo that entire fence. We're going to move the goats down with the pigs and the big pasture in the back, and we're going to move our emus up here. I think our emus will be happier. They'll have a huge door to get into our garage uh, so that they can kind of do their own thing. They seem much more personal uh, than the other animals. Uh, so, And when we pull up to come home every day, um, there's going to be emus sitting right next to us. So it's always fun to see the emus. Uh, so we're going to do that. And then the big one this year is off-grid solar. Um, we're not going to do everything off-grid, but uh, we want to do off-grid for our well water and for our kitchen. Uh, fridge, stove, uh, wood or wood burning stove, and then the oven, and then the fridge, and then uh, two freezers, uh, and then our um, wells. Uh, so all of that hopefully will be off-grid solar this year. So if anything happens, we've got that stuff, and that's pretty much the, the necessities that we would need uh, in case anything happens. So those are our goals. And again, we broke it down. We did very quick numbers. Uh, so we said, okay, starting bees, how much? And really, we just Googled it. What's the startup cost on bees? And then what's the startup cost on rabbits? And what's, you know, the going price for uh, off-grid solar panels? And wow, I don't, it's going to be a tough goal. It's going to be a tough goal. But we have 20 ways, 20 ways to get there in each one of those paths. And again, we've got our personal goals, which are 
very, very small. Uh, and then we've got our business goals. And if, again, our business has to do well so that we can do this homesteading stuff. So uh, hopefully you can watch us fulfill and succeed on all of those goals and have a lot of fun doing it. Hopefully we'll be doing a lot of videos showing you the progress that we're doing and, uh, and you can enjoy in our success. I'd love to know what your goals are if you wanna share put it in the comments. Uh, I'm trying to do my very best on responding to all the comments that come in. Uh, so I'd love to know what your goals are or any rules that you follow that I didn't mention. And uh, guys, thank you so very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I really hope that this helps you start a homestead or continue to grow your homestead or just personal life or your business, whatever the case may be. I just hope that it helps. Um, so I am not an expert at goal setting or pretty much anything, uh, except for Katernix Quail, you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, if you do wanna watch some people or listen to some people that are very, very insightful, uh, I've got three names that I really do uh, listen to a lot, and it is the late, great Zig Ziglar. I love him. He has an uh, audio book and a book out um, that is called, I think it's Goals. I think it's just Goals is the name of the book. Uh, but. Uh, I absolutely love Zig Ziglar. Uh, Dave Ramsey, I listen to religiously. Uh, I think he always has a great uh, mindset and I just, I love uh, what he has to say. And Brian Tracy was another one that really helped us get our goals situated because when we started here on the homestead, we wanted to go in every direction possible and uh, we didn't even know where to start. Uh, so we did a lot of research and listened to those people a lot plus a couple more um, and then we decided to come up with our own rules what would work best for us and uh, so far we're doing pretty well so I'm very happy with our success so again thank you very much for watching if you found this helpful or entertaining or whatever the case may be or you just want to support a family owned and operated quail farm hit the like button uh, I would greatly appreciate it subscribe to the channel and uh, if you have any questions put it in the comments and remember every Sunday and Monday I go live right here on our YouTube channel my Shire farm to do a live Q&A to help you on your journey with Katernix quail and becoming more self-sufficient. Until next time, everybody, stay safe.